In 2016, a rich celebrity and businessman from outside politics, Donald Trump won unexpectedly and surprised everyone. People wondered why so many voted for a non-politician. What's even more surprising is Trump wanting to change health insurance, not caring about the environment, and acknowledging the rich-poor gap. Most of his support came from white people affected by these issues. So, why did they vote for him despite these things? Now, let's talk about caste system of America and you will understand why. You might have heard of the caste or class system of India and you might feel bad about it. The caste system has defined a person's future since the time of birth, and a class and another was divided by strict rules. Most of you may have thought that kind of horrible caste system does not exist in the USA. But you are going to find out how the intense caste system hits America, and why Trump has become a president, and how racist the America. So before we dive into the caste system of the USA, let's talk about India first. At its origin, there were four main caste divisions, each assigned specific roles and occupations. People were expected to stick to the caste they were born into, and there were distinct job categories for each caste. Simplifying it, there was a caste dedicated to religious and spiritual roles, another for authority and security, one for trade and farms, and a laborer class. Movement between these castes was traditionally restricted, and inter-class marriages were not permitted. The division and discrimination between classes has grown bigger and bigger. Individuals have to spend the rest of their lives depending on which class they are born in. So you just have heard this disturbing caste system in India and you might be thinking that this kind of system does not exist in the USA. But, believe it, it does exist. In the United States, the caste-like system is predominantly influenced by race, with white people occupying the top tier, followed by Asians or Latinos in the middle, and black people often at the lowest rung. There is no scientific evidence showing that individual capabilities do not vary based on race. The genetic similarities among races are around 99.9%, .9%, except for just how they look. Racism is primarily a means of exploitation, where one race seeks to exploit another. So let's dive into how the caste system was born in a bit of history. Back in 1619, Dutch soldiers brought a couple dozens of African people to Virginia. These Africans are bought by the British and who had been living under the caste system and became slaves. Britain was in need of cheap slave labor and expansion of New World America. Africans can withstand very harsh nature conditions such as diseases, weathers and so on and very durable. They were implanted in sugarcane plantations and cotton productions and was very hardworking and it is undeniable fact that these Europeans would not be able to expand against diseases and conditions without the help of Africans. So, the slave trade across Atlantic was a messed up scene that went on until 1865. White people treated black people like they were their property, using them as collateral, selling them, giving them as gifts, betting with them, and settling debts by trading them. The way they treated Africans back then, it's too brutal to get into here. Just go watch Django Unchained or something. So, after the Civil War, slavery was officially done, but racism stuck around, especially in the South. Back in 1877, the federal government kind of stepped back and let the southern states do their thing politically. Some southerners, feeling a bit sour about losing the war, decided to oppress black people, creating this whole caste system and throwing in some complicated laws to keep them down. And it wasn't just about black and white anymore. This whole caste system spilled over to other immigrants like Asians and Latinos, who got stuck in this racial hierarchy too. In the 1960s, African Americans took a stand for their civil rights, successfully challenging and overturning oppressive and convoluted laws. However, despite these efforts, the caste system persisted and did not completely disappear. In present times, the caste system in the United States may not be readily visible but it exists in more subtle and insidious forms. In caste system of India, the class of the children has to look onto father, in American before slavery was abolished. The class and status of if he should be slave or not has to look upon its mother unlike India, because slave owners sometimes rape their slaves. And if it is look up to father side, they will have to give mortgage to the children. If look up onto mother, the incoming children will be slave and there will be more slaves. Endogamy, defined as marrying within one's race, was actively promoted in 41 out of 50 states in the USA until 1967. 
laws enforcing racial purity were only abolished in 1967, with Alabama resisting until the early 2000s. This system, prevalent mostly in southern states, widened the racial gap between whites and African Americans. This paves a way to racism and discrimination in various aspects of life, including healthcare, education, and daily interactions. The discriminatory practices extended beyond African Americans. Balkan and Southern Europeans were not even defined as pure white people, aiming to strengthen perceived racial purity. While such practices have largely disappeared, remnants may still exist in certain locations. After despite the end of slavery, African Americans were set free from slavery but many agreed to working for the white people since there were limited jobs for them. They continued to take roles such as house chores and plantation work, but with wages and increased rights. In the North, labor unions reserved skilled jobs like electrician, plumbing and carpentry for white workers. This pattern persisted well into the 20th century, with few African Americans securing skilled or managerial positions, I mean for intellectual jobs. Even those who became managers had to manage their own communities within the workplace. Black people were used as a form of entertainment for their landlords. They are mostly assigned for physical jobs and mostly for entertainment. This persisted into the 20th century, with many of the wealthiest black individuals being successful athletes before transitioning into business. Despite progress, racial disparities in job opportunities and social hierarchies continued to shape the experiences of African Americans. There's this deep-seated issue with stereotypes that goes way back to the whole caste system deal. Back then, they made sure the lower class people couldn't get their hands on nice stuff. Fast forward to now, and it's still a thing. Some people just can't handle it when black people roll up with fancy houses, cars, and all the good stuff. And don't even get me started on how movies and media keep pushing this idea that being black means you're not as smart, don't meet the beauty standards, and aren't as valuable. Today, the media still plays this game, blowing up the poverty stats for black communities and playing up crimes committed by black folks. Actually, only about 27% of black Americans are in poverty, not this 60% plus drama they make it out to be. And guess what? Two-thirds of poor people in the U.S. are white, but you'd never know it from the media, which only showcases around 17% of them. As per Martin Gilens, the Yale political scientist, a whopping half of the population believes that half of the poor people are black. Now, let's talk about this stereotype mess where black people get automatically tagged as crime suspects. The reports on suspicions reach 42%, but guess what? Only 10% of them end up being actually guilty. What's even more messed up is that a lot of white folks seem to buy into this idea that black people are some kind of societal poison, spreading drugs and crime. Yeah, that's really sucks. So we can all conclude that this kind of caste system and racism has a direct and unavoidable impact of black population. Black people have been suffering from racism, discrimination and dehumanization for nearly 300 years. This whole thing messes things up for both black and white communities, but in all the wrong ways. Among black folks, thanks to the historical resource scarcity and the messed up caste system, it's like this unspoken competition. It's hard for some to handle when another black person starts shining, and instead of cheering them on, some end up pulling them down. Everyone's trying to climb up, but it ends up dragging everyone down. This mindset tends to manifest among black individuals holding specific positions, like black officers who are often observed oppressing fellow black people just as much as their white counterparts. You might be wondering how this connects to the caste system, but it does. Black cops sometimes exert their authority on other blacks, partly to gain favor with their higher-ranking white officers and also to assert that they're not inferior to other blacks. It's a messed-up way of navigating this caste system, essentially becoming oppressors within their own race to secure a certain standing. It might seem like the caste system doesn't affect the white population, but it actually has a substantial impact. It creates what we can call an existential crisis. Many white individuals automatically perceive themselves as always being one step ahead and above black people. Even if they lose their homes or jobs, they don't view themselves as becoming inferior to black people. There's this ingrained belief that being white is inherently better than being black, regardless of the circumstances. When there's a growing number of successful black individuals, it triggers discomfort among some white folks, prompting them to question their own existence. This internal struggle adds an unnecessary layer of depression and anxiety, especially when they witness success in the black community. Since 2000, there's been a worrying spike in the death rate among white people aged 45 minus 54 in the USA. A lot of these deaths are linked to things like drug overdoses, heavy drinking, 
and suicides tied to mental struggles. It seems like this existential crisis is hitting them hard, messing with their mental well-being. And neuroscientists highlight that people with racist views are more likely to deal with high blood pressure and cortisol levels. That stress cocktail raises the risk of serious health problems like heart disease, diabetes, and strokes, even bumping up the chances of an early exit. It's like the mental toll from the whole caste system deal is really taking a toll on the physical and mental health of the white population in an indirect way. So, the caste system stirring up a lot of racial conflicts. Black individuals are rightfully pushing for their rights, but it's making some white folks uneasy. They're blaming black people for job losses, education cuts, and healthcare issues. As conditions get tougher for white people, this hatred toward black people intensifies, fueling extreme right-wing movements and turning things violent. And you know what? It's turning into this never-ending mess. There's this book, Dying of Whiteness by psychiatrist Jonathan M. Metzl, that talks about a 41-year-old taxi driver in Tennessee. This guy had a serious liver disease, but when the Affordable Care Act wasn't a thing yet, he opposed it. Why? Because he didn't want his tax money going to what he saw as inferior people. Basically, he thought black folks would get the same healthcare rights as white folks. It's like this messed up idea that sharing rights equals taking from them. Scholars say the U.S. has a high level of ignorance among citizens, and all this mess is basically a backfire from the system. In summary, the caste system has led to an unfortunate toll on lives. Between 2011 and 2015, 4599 avoidable deaths of black individuals occurred due to their inability to afford necessary health care, while the death toll for white individuals reached 12,013. The U.S. grapples with widespread issues such as high rates of gun crimes, robberies, and imprisonment, coupled with a minimum wage lower than many European countries. Additionally, the fertility rates of both children and mothers have suffered. It's a chaotic aftermath stemming from the system's flaws. Racism and discrimination, the root causes of these problems, create a cycle of suffering for all communities with no real winners. The key to resolving these issues lies in fostering peace and treating everyone equally. It's not about pointing fingers, but acknowledging that we're all in this together. As for Trump, it's not about labeling him as good or bad, but recognizing that his appeal to a segment of white voters facing an existential crisis played a role in his political ascent. A political scientist from Duke University, Ashley Jardina highlights how this crisis among white individuals contributed significantly to Trump's rise to office. This just shows how crucial it is to tackle racism and discrimination head-on. Nobody really wins in this game, so let's focus on equality and compassion to build a society where we're not weighed down by division and conflict.